Hey everyone, this is video three in the foundational video series for the Aim With Speed shooting system, where I show you the things that are underneath the surface for how we shoot the bank shots in all my videos. First, I'm gonna show you five reasons that the diamond system is a really bad design and we're kind of working around its flaws when we use it. Second, I'm gonna show you five conditions of the Aim With Speed numbering system that I think are really important for a good way to number the rails. And finally, I'm gonna show you four examples of using the aim with speed numbering system. First up, the diamonds don't actually overlap. A lot of people think the diamond system would be a grid all the way around the table like I'm showing here, which puts the corners in the corners. However, that's not the case. In fact, the diamonds are designed to sight at the edge of the rail. As a result, the corners of the diamond system don't actually end up in the corner. They end up looking like this which lead to two subsequent problems. The first problem is that zero is not the center of the pocket. Now this doesn't usually come into play as a starting diamond or an aiming diamond, but it's more about how we visually divide up the first diamond into decimals. If you visualize zero in the center of the pocket, 0.5 would be about here, but actually the true location of zero puts 0.5 here, which is a very different location to aim at and changes the entire scale of that gap. Likewise, when you get to the other end of the table, diamond eight is actually in sort of two places, right? You've got one sort of diamond eight, which is the end of the side rail diamonds, and then you have the beginning of the end rail diamonds. Both of them are kind of diamond eight, but neither of them are actually dead in the pocket. A lesser known issue is that some table manufacturers offset diamond four in the same way. This visually looks like what I'm showing here and ends up having a slight extra in the gap between the third diamond and the fifth diamond. This is a less common issue and doesn't happen on my table, but on some tables, the extra gap is upwards of three eighths of an inch. A final flaw with the diamond system is it appears like once you get to the end of the side rail diamonds, you can just wrap around and go up the end rail diamonds. And while we tend to number them that way, it should be pointed out that the end diamonds do not line up with the side diamonds, so they mean something different. If you want more on this, check out my end numbers are not side numbers video. Now, while we recognize the flaws in the diamond system, it remains that it offers the potential to be an extremely concrete aiming system. Here are the five parameters I use in the aim with speed system to make it work for me. First, I start at zero and count by ones. If you're new to aiming systems, this seems silly to point out, but plenty of systems don't use this basic premise. Note that I place diamond four and eight as the center of the pockets and calculate all points of aim on this premise. Note too that the end rails also count by one, but these are just arbitrary starting points for memorization purposes. Of course, the numbers flip in orientation as you move around the table. Second, I divide each diamond into decimals. For me, using tenths is the sweet spot between a high level of accuracy and the human ability to visualize each location. Third, I buck the idea of aiming at the diamonds along the rail, and I base all my shots from a diamond to diamond aim. This defies the true design of the diamond system, but it's much easier to visualize. Fourth, all aiming patterns have a positive correlation. That is, as the starting diamond goes up, the aiming diamond also goes up with it. They don't go in the opposite direction. Finally, this numbering pattern stays the same for every shot. Once you make sense of it, you can focus on mastering the shots without the added challenge of memorizing new rail numbers. Finally, I'm going to show you four examples of using the numbers. What I'm going to do is give you a number pattern I want you to visualize, and then you're going to try to figure it out before I show it, but I'm going to show it pretty quick, so pause if you want to. First, what would 5 through side rail 2.2 be? Next, what would 7 through end rail 2.5 be? Five through end rail 1.6 in the other direction. And finally, 11 through side rail 5.1. So that's how I number the rails in the aim with speed bank shot system. And if you haven't yet, consider downloading my decimal markers to make aiming even easier. I have lay flat strips, I have portable pop-ups, which are kinda cool, and I've actually recently updated all the files. Now the seven foot markers have three different sizes for 10 inch, nine and three quarter, and nine and a half inch distances. The eight foot has something similar with 11 and 11 and a quarter inch, and I've made the nine foot 
uh, diamond markers even easier to print than before. So download those at poolometry.com and be even more accurate when you're practicing the aim with speed bank shot system.